All right, Caleb Williams and DJ Moore talked about a miscommunication on a route last week. We'll break that down for you guys. We got the latest injury report from Hallis Hall as well and how a potential Devontae Adams trade could impact the Bears. No, the Bears aren't going to trade for him, but if this team does, that is not ideal. So we will get into all of that here on today's show. But before we do, help a brother out. Share this video. All you got to do is click the share icon, select X, Twitter, and tag me at HGramNFL. Everybody that does that will get a retweet from yours truly. So uh, share the video, follow the steps. You'll get a retweet. We very, very appreciate it. All right. Uh, Caleb Williams speaking to the media before DJ Moore does today and talked about that misfire up the right sideline. Uh, late in the first half, if you remember, DJ kind of got inside leverage and kind of got loose, and then he kind of went outside on his route. Caleb thought he was going to stay inside, threw it high with a lot of velocity, and, you know, some frustration seemed to boil over afterwards. Here's Caleb explaining kind of what happened there, and he said, I saw DJ go inside, and I thought he was going to keep it more vertical, but he went more back out, so just not on the same page on that one. I wouldn't say it's somebody's fault. We went to the sideline, let everything calm down. I'm frustrated. He's frustrated in that moment. We both want to go score. Let everything calm down and go talk to him afterwards so we can get on the same page. So when it does happen again, we hit uh, we hit for a big one going into the half. And I think my take on this, and we saw it during the game, some videos uh, emerging on social media of Caleb kind of talking to DJ, like, you know, you could tell they were communicating with their hands, like, hey, like, I saw you do this, thought you were going to do that, that type of stuff, and I, I like that. I like the leadership, and I like him saying, like, yeah, like, I let things simmer for a little bit because he's annoyed, I'm annoyed, like, there's no reason to go bark at each other right away, but then, hey, a couple minutes later, hey, what did you see? This is what I saw. This When you get this leverage, uh, I want you to do this next time, and you need your quarterback to, to do those things for you. And DJ also spoke to the media today, and there's been a lot of speculation. Oh, DJ and Caleb, maybe maybe they don't get along, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and DJ said this, and he said, I said it was on me. Uh, that's what he said after the game as well. I didn't really know what he was thinking. I was thinking one thing, which was go going back out, but we got it fixed now. And look, my take on this is these things take time. These things take time. Sometimes it comes together quickly between a quarterback and receiver. Sometimes it takes longer. Um, you know, DJ and Justin were productive together. Uh, that doesn't mean they should have kept Justin. It just, for whatever case, uh, for whatever reason, Caleb and DJ have been not on the same page at times. And, and, and that's okay. They're four games into a rookie quarterback's career. and Obviously, DJ's probably not off to the start. He'd love uh, from a statistical standpoint. But I think we got to flush this idea that He's just unhappy to be here, misses Justin, all this stuff. Like, I'm not saying there isn't some shred of truth that could exist. I, I just don't think there's really anything to heavily point to at this time. Now, if a couple more games go on and uh, some poor body language continues, because that is something that's been real. His body language at times has not been great. and That was not an issue last year, but... I firmly believe the big plays will come. I think he's frustrated because they've missed on some opportunities due to miscommunications at times, due to Caleb missing a couple throws, and that's natural. You want to get the ball when you're open. So uh, let's give this some more time. Let's not freak out. Uh, and if you listen to both of them talk today, because there was a tweet from, I believe, CHGO just quoting something DJ said. A bunch of people were like, I'm sick of DJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another Bears reporter had to quote tweet it with the clip, and He's kind of joking, half-hearted, having fun. It was about his touchdown. He was like, yeah, if he didn't find me on that one when I was matching the linebacker, we would have had to have another conversation on the sideline, kind of joking. Uh, and oh, obviously being a little serious because it's like, yeah, I'm on a linebacker. Throw me the ball. But he literally said, yeah, I was second or third in the progression. So it didn't even start with me. So we, we got to – let's not turn a nothing story into one. If a few more weeks go by and there's more uh, situations, okay, maybe there's something there. But so far – I think it's just a young quarterback with a veteran receiver trying to get on the same page. And that happens whether it's with the rookie, a new quarterback, whatever the case may be. So are you concerned with the Caleb Williams, DJ Moore connection? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Uh, YouTube ad break coming up. Give me a Y for yes, in for no during this ad. And afterwards, I'll give my final take.
I want to see how the next two weeks go. Because if I'm the Bears, I'm trying to get DJ involved early and often against Carolina this week. Get him engaged. Get him some touches, whether they're easy completions. Maybe get him a touch or two out of the backfield. I like that creative play where they brought him in motion, faked it to the handoff, and then handed it to him, and he cut it upfield for like 10 yards, got called back for, I think, an illegal formation. But there are different ways to get him the football, even if the downfield connections aren't uh, working out right now. And I think those will come, like I said. So let's see how the next couple of weeks go. Let's not jump to any conclusions uh, one month into this thing. All right, Tevin Jenkins not practicing today. He is dealing with a ribs injury. Uh, Matt Eberflus is hopeful that he'll be able to play this week against Carolina, uh, but said the Bears will look at some different combinations on the offensive line uh, just in case. I would expect if he can't play, you're going to see what we saw to finish last game. Matt Pryor at left guard, Nate Davis at right guard. So uh, we'll see how that all shakes out. Other guys on the injury report, we will get to that after we talk about today's sponsor. That is game time. If you're looking to go to a Bears game this season, perhaps the Panthers this week, or maybe you want to make the trip to London, get your tickets with game time today. There's nothing better than going to watch your favorite team's favorite bands, etc. Go play in person. And Game Time's newest feature, Game Time Picks, makes getting to see your favorite teams play and makes getting uh, to see your favorite teams play in uh, the best seats possible for the best bang for your buck easier. It just filters out the thousands of tickets and it'll kind of say, hey, if you want to be in the second level, this is the best bang for your buck. If you want to be fourth level, best bang for your buck, etc. It's going to kind of reduce uh, how much you have to skim through. So that is awesome. Uh, whether you're getting tickets for a sporting event, concert, comedy show, or anything else, Game Time has you covered with views from the seats, super deals, which are the best bang for your buck, and then last minute tickets for the lowest prices guaranteed. So download the Game Time app today. Use code Chat Sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase only right now. It's code Chat Sports twenty dollars off. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Look at the Bears' full injury report. DeAndre Carter also dealing with a ribs injury. That was a player Fluce mentioned at his presser as well, so we'll keep an eye on him. Zach Pickens, Terrell Smith continue to miss practice. I would not expect them to return this week. Jenkins and Carter, the two players to keep an eye on. Komet's got a knee issue. He's limited. He should be fine. Sweat's been battling this foot-ankle thing for a while now, so I think they're just kind of keeping him or ramping him up during the week so he's ready to go on Sundays. Uh, Flus also did mention Jacob Martin, who's eligible to return off IR starting this week because uh, he was placed on short-term IR before the season, which meant he had to miss the first four weeks, uh, which means he's not eligible to return. But Flus said he will not uh, open his practice window this week. And, you know, I, I wonder if that's a he's not ready from whatever injury he was battling standpoint or from a – where does he really fit? I mean, I don't think he's getting snaps over Montez Sweat, Daryl Taylor, or Demarcus Walker, or quite frankly, even Austin Booker. So are you benching Daniel Hardy for him? I doubt it because Hardy's been a really good player on special teams. So I'm just not sure there's a spot for Martin right now. It could be a situation where you just leave him on IR until an injury pops up. And that may not be fair to him, but his, his paycheck's still clearing. That This is the NFL, man. Uh, I was surprised they didn't mention Larry Borum, who also would be eligible to return, but Flus didn't mention him. No one asked about him. So uh, for now, I would assume he's uh, staying on IR at this point. Uh, but uh, with the Bears' offensive line issues, uh, he could be an option to activate at some point in time. All right, help us out. Trying to get to 104,000 subscribers. We're at 103.281. Appreciate everybody who subscribed already. If you want to join this channel for free, hit that sub button, and let's get to 104. All right, Devontae Adams, get to the latest here and how it could impact the Bears. He wants out of Vegas ASAP, according to multiple reports, and uh, several teams are reportedly interested. His top two uh, preferences are the first two teams mentioned there, the Jets and the Saints. Uh, the Steelers have reportedly reached out. That's been an ongoing discussion. The Lions have been mentioned uh, as a team. That's been more on the rumor mill, but more on them in a second. Uh, the Cowboys, there was a report they are interested. Jordan Schultz said they weren't, so who knows? Uh, probably not because Jerry Jones is pretty cheap these days. And then uh, Washington Commanders uh, as has been rumored. There was a report that an unnamed NFC team uh, is interested, and a lot of people think that's Washington because on the betting market, uh, at, uh, Washington jumped up to the second best odds to trade for him, so that could be a possibility. And look – if he goes to Detroit, that's a big deal for the Bears because 
I think they're – I would still have them as the team to beat in this division. I get Minnesota's 4-0. I get the Packers are capable. But to me, uh, the Lions have the best chance to make the deepest run. They add Devontae Adams to an offense with the Monroe St. Brown, Jamison Williams. You think about that trio. Adams and St. Brown as the possession guys. Jamo taking off the top. Um, that's pretty dynamic. Oh, by the way, some guy named Sam Laporte is pretty good. Oh, by the way, they have arguably the best offensive line in the NFL. Oh, by the way, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs might be the best one-two punch in the NFL. Oh, and Jared Goff, when he's kept clean and with all these weapons, he's pretty damn good too. So I, I do not want to see number 17 running around for the Detroit Lions. We've already, we saw that twice a year for a decade when he was with the Packers. So hopefully that is not the case. Again, Adams' reported preference is the is the uh, Jets or Saints. Why is that? Well, he played with Aaron Rodgers forever, so the Jets make sense for both sides, really. They need another weapon on offense. And then same with the Saints. A big reason he wanted to go to Vegas in the first place was to play with his pal Derek Carr. They feel like they could be one piece away on offense from be, really taking off offensively, so uh, they could be an option as well. Before he asked, the Bears don't make any sense. I mean, are you going to trade Keenan Allen back? Like, I like Adams better than Allen, but are the Raiders doing that? I just I don't think trading for a receiver like Adams is necessary or really even makes sense at this point in time. What do you guys think? Predict it for us. Where will Devontae Adams get traded to if you had to predict right now? I mean, the Jets feel like the safe bet. Uh, Rossini said that based on the teams she's talked to in conversations, she's had most believe the Jets will get this done, uh, but uh, maybe it's someone else. I just don't want the Lions and – Quite frankly, if uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae want to tear it up together, if it's in New York, I uh, I really don't care as long as it's not with the Packers. All right, that's going to do it for Chicago Bears now. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. A lot more to come here on this channel. Live show tomorrow. We'll have a video up in the morning as well. Uh, so bear down, and we will see you guys then. Peace.